Hi, this is Dave from JavaCodeJunkie.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Scene class in JavaFX. First step, as always, is to create a new project. So we'll go File, New, Project, JavaFX Project, click Next, and we're going to call it Scene Explorer. And click next, next, and finish. And then let's just open up the main class under the application package. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to get rid of a few things in here and start from scratch. In our previous video uh, about the stage, uh, we already created a scene object, but in this video we're going to take a closer look at all of the different options that we have for creating a scene. So essentially we're going to look at all of the constructors in the scene class. So for right now, let's just comment out this one that we created last time and we'll create a new one. And control space in Eclipse will bring up all of the different options that we can have. So in each of the constructors for the scene object, you need to have a root node. And the root node will contain all of the various visual contents that we want to display on the stage. So the scene contains a scene graph, which is a tree structure. And within that tree structure, there are elements that are called nodes. And they all descend from, surprise, surprise, the JavaFX node class. And the nodes form a hierarchical parent and child relationship. So nodes can be one of three different types. The node can be a root node, as we have seen in the previous constructor. The scene that we constructed used for its root node a border pane. So the border pane is a parent object that can contain other node objects. So the root can contain child objects, but it is the only node in the scene graph in a scene that does not have a parent object. So it is at the top of the hierarchy. The next type of node that you can have in a scene graph is the branch node. Now the branch, like the root node, can also have children, but it also has a parent. Parent. In, in the first case of the first branch you add to the scene graph, the parent would be the root node. The third and final type of node that can be added to a scene graph is called a leaf. Now the leaf is at the end of the branch. It does not have any children, but it also has a parent. So to make it easier to see what we're doing, I'm going to get rid of the entire contents of the start method, and I'm going to fill in an example of each one of the different constructors for the scene object. And once I've done that, uh, I'll be right back and I'll continue from that point. I've actually put in examples of the four different constructors that we're, we're going to use, and I'll just show you all of them. There are actually six. Two of them refer to uh, a depth buffer that's for use in 3D transformations. So we're not going to be doing any of that, so we actually have four that are left that don't reference the depth buffer. So the first constructor simply specifies the root. It does not specify any of the other parameters that are used in the three other constructors that are shown below. It doesn't specify the height or the width or the fill color of the scene. So when we run this one, we'll get whatever the default size is that's set up by the stage for this scene. So we get the stage with an empty scene and a fill color 
is the default, which is white. Uh, let's comment that first one. On comment the second one. And the second one, same thing. It sets the root of the scene graph to and this time, instead of using the border pane, I've simply used a vertical box, which simply stacks the, any of the child nodes on top of one another. So you, it's, it's like a list from top to bottom. And it's just simpler. So what we're going to do here now is have a look at the second one. We specify the root, which is the vertical box, and we give it a color of red. Again, we don't specify the size and the height or the width. So if we run that one, we should essentially get the same as the first one, but we're going to get the scene fill color as red. And there we are. Same thing. Very bright. We'll comment that one, and now we'll have a look at the third. Now the third specifies again the root, which is the vertical box, and this time we specify dimensions of 400 by 300, so 400 width and 300 height. We don't specify the color, so we'll get a stage with a scene of 400 by 300, this time with the default fill color of white. Run that, and there we are. 400 wide, 300 height. And the fourth one specifies all of the parameters. We have the root, which is the vertical box. We have 400 width, 300 height, and we specify the fill color as red. And the last thing that I want to mention about the scene class at this point is you also have the ability to set the cursor for any given scene. And that's done through the set cursor method. So let's give that a shot. And it takes a value from the cursor enumeration class. And you can have any of these values, the closed hand, crosshair, the default cursor, disappear, east, height, hand, move. There's a whole bunch of different ones there. So just for the purposes of illustration, I'm just going to show you the crosshair. And if we run this one, you'll see when... I pass the cursor over the scene, the cursor changes to the crosshair. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to receive a notification when I post new videos. Be safe out there and until next time, keep on coding.